Hey, hey friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff. I recently got a comment on my YouTube channel from someone who was just really confused about all of the different types of crafting lasers that there are out there. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain each of the different types of lasers so that you can make the best choice for your needs, your space, and your budget. For a long time, the laser space was really male dominated and dominated by people who sort of did laser crafting professionally. And unfortunately, in a lot of the big laser Facebook groups on Reddit, um, there are a lot of people out there that look down on people who are trying to get into laser crafting. They tell people, just do your research, figure it out, why are you asking here? And honestly, it makes me so sad because I want everybody who wants to get into laser crafting to feel welcome. And one of the big things you need to do on your laser journey is figure out which laser you want to buy. And it's not helpful if people are looking down on you in those Facebook groups or wherever. So in this video, I'm just hoping to make everything as clear as possible. I'm not going to use a bunch of technical language. I'm just going to tell you about the three different kinds of lasers so that you can really get an idea of what they can do and what might be best for you. If you want to know about individual laser machines, I have a lot of videos and I also have a big laser comparison chart. It talks about all the different specifications, it gives you all the special features, um, everything you need to know to buy. I also give you links, my star rating, all of the links to my reviews, everything you need. So you can go ahead and click that link in the description below and I will send it to you. Let's start by talking about diode lasers. So these are the most popular crafting lasers and that is because they are more economical and they are smaller. So if you are just looking at getting into laser crafting, you're probably going to be looking at a diode laser. How does a diode laser work? There's a semiconductor inside of the machine. It creates the light and then there's more than one of those and some mirrors focus it all together to create the beam for the laser. I told you this wasn't going to be particularly technical, but what you really need to know is what a diode laser can do. So a diode laser can cut and engrave all sorts of natural materials. So especially wood, leather, stone, coated metals, and a variety of other materials, but it can't cut all colors of acrylic. The diode laser beam is actually on the blue light spectrum. And because of this, the laser actually just basically shoots through anything that is blue, clear, transparent, there are a variety of things sort of in that color spectrum that won't work. You can cut some darker opaque acrylics, so black, dark red tends to work pretty well, even darker yellows tend to work, but if you wanna cut the entire spectrum of acrylic, a diode laser isn't going to work. Now you may be thinking, I'm just gonna get a more powerful diode laser, right? So there are a lot of 10 watt lasers on the market, but X-Tool, for example, makes a 40 watt diode laser, and you're like, that, that should definitely get through there. But it doesn't have to do with the wattage, it has to do with the color of that beam. And because the color of the beam is blue, the 40 watt is still not going to be able to cut through it. And not only will it not cut through it, it will not engrave it either. If you want to work with that large range of acrylics, you're going to want to use a CO2 laser, which I'll talk about here in a minute. I do want to come back to the coated metal part of this as well. A diode laser can engrave coated metal. It can't cut any metal. None of the lasers I'm talking about here today can cut metal, um, but it can engrave coated metals. So this includes things like powder coated tumblers. This is a big one that people want to do. Yes, a diode laser can do that. You can also buy like special sprays that you can use to put on a coating on uncoated metal to be able to engrave it. But if you want to engrave uncoated metal, you're going to need an IR laser, which I'll talk about even later in this video. I really like diode lasers for beginners because they are easy to use, they aren't very expensive, they aren't very big, and they are just a lot easier to use. I do see people buying diode lasers that don't have an enclosure, so they're just sort of a frame and the laser works within the frame. I don't recommend those because I don't think they have enough safety precautions. I do recommend getting a laser that has a full safety enclosure as well as some good safety features. All right, let's talk about CO2 lasers. These lasers are actually made using a CO tube. So it basically is a tube in the back of the machine that has CO2 along with some other gases. And again, through the magic of some sort of science, that gas creates an infrared laser beam that is used to cut and engrave your materials. Note that I said that this one is on the infrared spectrum. The IR laser that I'm going to talk about here in a little bit, IR also stands for infrared. So these are two different types of infrared lasers. Now you can see why this would get confusing, but they are on different parts of the infrared spectrum. And that is really the big difference between these two types of lasers. The CO2 laser is on a part of that infrared spectrum that allows you to cut all of those colors of acrylic that a diode can't. This is probably the biggest reason I see people upgrading to a CO2 laser. CO2 lasers are bigger, more expensive, and they are not as durable as um, diode lasers. So there has to be some benefit to get this much larger machine right, and that benefit is being able to cut that different colored acrylic. 
I will note that I just reviewed the Flux Bemo recently, which is a smaller CO2 laser. It is the smallest CO2 laser on the market. And I think it's a good option if you want to like upgrade from that diode laser, but you don't have the space or a budget for one of the really big CO2 lasers. And then let's go back to metal for a minute. A CO2 laser cannot engrave uncoated metal just like a diode laser. Again, it's not on the correct spectrum, but you can engrave metal that has had a coating put on it. So that includes things like powder coated tumblers, using your own coating, etc. Finally, let's take a look at IR lasers. IR stands for infrared, but like I said, it is on a different spectrum than the CO2 infrared. IR lasers are really designed to engrave uncoated metals. Quite a few of the diode lasers I have have an option for a swappable IR module. So you'll basically remove the diode module and then you will replace it with that IR module. I am having a very hard time saying module. Um, and then you will be able to use those machines as an IR laser as well. That IR laser is really meant to engrave uncoated metals. There are a few other things it can engrave, but it really doesn't cut and it really doesn't have a wide variety of things you can make with it. But if you wanna make metal jewelry, metal bookmarks, all of those sorts of things, you may wanna think about getting an IR laser in addition to another laser. Maybe you are the type of person that only needs that IR feature, but I have found that most laser users want to make more projects than just engraving metal. This is like a good add-on, but it wouldn't be necessarily the first machine I would buy unless you are seriously only interested in engraving uncoated metal. Now that we know the differences between all of these types of lasers, you may be asking which one is best. Unfortunately, you have to decide based on your own needs, your space and your budget. Do you need a very big laser? Do you need a very small laser? Do you have a lot of money to spend? Do you have very little money to spend? And you have to decide what you actually wanna make. Those three things will help you decide which laser is ultimately best for you. All right, let's do a quick overview. Diode lasers, they are more economical. They are cheaper. They last longer. They tend to be smaller. They also can cut and engrave all sorts of cool natural materials, including wood and leather. They can engrave stone, that sort of thing. They can also engrave coated metals. They can't, however, cut and engrave all colors of acrylic and they can't engrave uncoated metals. CO2 lasers, bigger, more expensive, but more capable. They can cut all of those colors of acrylic. They can basically do everything a diode laser does and cut acrylic. They can't, however, engrave uncoated metals either. And then we have IR lasers, and basically these are a little bit more expensive, and their main purpose is to engrave non-coated metals. So they can't really do any cutting. There are a few other materials they can engrave, but for the most part, you're gonna wanna get one of those if you just wanna engrave uncoated metals. All right, I hope you found this overview helpful. I explain a lot of these things in all of my different laser videos, but I thought it would be really helpful to have it all in one place so I can refer to this video in the future. If you have any questions about different types of laser, or basically anything having to do with laser crafting, please leave those down in the comments. If you found this video helpful in a buying decision, please give it a like. Follow my channel for more laser and crafting content. I'll see you next time.